You know, it's almost like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the Famicom Pong Compact. The 2.4 GHz wireless gamepad control system, whatever. This thing has HDMI and I was more like, hey, we need to pick it up to check it out how good or bad it is. Because nowadays you don't find these things very often. Most of them like coming with AV out, but this thing comes with HDMI out and it needs a five volt adapter, wireless gamepads. Oh boy. It sounds very interesting, so let's take a close look inside the box itself. Sometimes you're going to get these offers that we can get some self on Naughty Card. This is a 150 in one. It's quite confusing because there are like 10 different versions of these. So I don't know if it's any good. Sometimes they're like really cheap and have a chemical smell. <sighs> but this one smells very nice. The 5 file adapter, it also comes with a European conversion. <sighs> so that we're going to need. It's a really cheap to the cheap cheap 5 volt adapter. It has the option for AVO for the people who just like that. So what I do like it is that like a multi options so you can have HDMI and also AVO. So the model itself it's similar to the original Famicom from back from the 90s. And I'm curious if the thing holds up to its name. And I mean when it holds up to its name is the thing actually like a good Famicom player or is it just a really cheap, really cheap to the cheap cheap device. That's all the functionalities. This thing feels quite nice. Oh man. Oh man, this on and off switch is horrible. Like, really bad. Then we're going to get reset over here. On the bottom, we're not going to get any other options when it comes to special connections. Over here, we're going to get the HDMI out over there. Then we're going to get AV out here. Input for the DC, yeah, okay. They are like proud that we're going to get a 2.4G connection with the controllers. Down the front, we're going to get to a normal controller. So if you want to use original one, that is possible. Oh boy. So let's try this one out. Let's plug it in. Sometimes like a freaking nightmare getting these games in. <sighs> let's lift off. Hmm. What a piece of crap. Ugh. Well, let's talk about the controllers. So the controllers itself, they weigh almost nothing. And it seems to be like there isn't built in battery because we can turn it off and we can also charge it. So quite interesting for the money. Then we go to get the controls with turbo functionality. It's quite interesting, the D-pad feels very nice. Select start the rubbery buttons. So it's going to be AB and AB turbo. Hmm, it's interesting. So we not open it up. Let's see what's inside. Okay, so let's do a quick teardown of the controller because I am really curious what are we going to get in the inside. It's going to be maybe the same crap like always, but the control here feels quite nice, like a quality one. So I'm very pleased about that. Okay, so let's lift up the top cover. Over here, we're going to get the indication of the year. So this thing is made in 2020. So this is quite a new product. The switch is very sturdy. Like it, it's just freaking awful. Look at this really tiny lithium battery. So let's lift out the PCB. And here you can see like it's an, that's a regular PCB that we've seen before. They're using the cheap membranes over here, like the transparent editions. But there is no indication what kind of battery we're going to get. I am not going to remove it because it's put over there with double-sided tape. And if you want to replace it, you need to do some soldering. All right, well later on we'll check out if they're working properly. Okay, so I tested out like how the ejection function works. And I must say, like, putting the cartridges in and out, it's fairly easy. But of course, if you want to use this function, it's going to be a little bit tricky with fake ones. And the reason I'm saying fake ones, when we're going to get an original game, they fit in perfectly, like, there is no problem whatsoever. And also, if you want to put it out. So I just want to show you this, that, like, it's a big difference if you're going to get yourself, like, a multi-game card or an original one. Oh, man, this fits, it fits, like, it fits in perfectly. Like, this makes me really exciting that the cartridge is fits in very nice. So let's take a close look at the quality for the AV out and the HDMI signal. Okay, so there was one big issue with this device with the AV out. The connection of the pins and not with the cable. The cable is perfectly, but the pins on the mainboard are like awful. All right, the controller works plug and play. I cannot see if it can reconfigure it for player one or player two. 
The single output is okay. I can see a lot of, let's say, interference in the display itself. So it's a little bit of a bummer. So I'm curious how this will look in the end when it comes to the HDMI functionality. Okay, so let's try the first game. A little bit of a bummer that they messed it up with the XPS ratio. So I'm just going to play it like this. So if you have a television, you can just basically put it on 4x3 XPS ratio. It's still not the best solution, but it's better than nothing. It's such a weird thing, because when you're looking at different devices, only with AV out, some of them even have the option to have the 4x3 XPS ratio switch in the back. So man, it's with these Chinese Famicom clones, always the question, what are they messing up today? Mm, the button itself of this device plays slightly different than the original controller. And also the D-pad need to be pressed very hard. Another interesting option is if you're powering it on without a cartridge, it will boot up into this. Another multi-game card. A great feature when you're pressing select to start at the same time, it will reset the system, so you can just chill in your chair and play some games. So that is quite naughty. So we're going to get a 188 built in. Hmm. Okay, that's a new one. Alright guys, so let's open it up. I want to see what's inside this me machine. And I must say that some parts of this device I don't like. So first of all, there is no XPS ratio switch. I don't get it why some of these devices have it and some don't. This thing has HDMI, but there's always something they need to miss out. So let's see if we can open it up. Yep, that's it. All right, so that is the back plate or the bottom part. All right, so the only thing that we're going to get are basically three PCBs. Here you can see the mechanism for sliding it up. It's all made very cheaply. Okay, so let's remove the first PCB over here. I'm curious if every single part comes from 2020 or are there any other parts that are made earlier than 2020? Here can we already see, I just wanted to show you over here with the PCB that here you can see like the antenna. It's all made so cheaply. It's cheap, did it cheap, cheap. And that is the way to go. But I'm curious why this slide on and off switch is so horrible. So okay, here comes something that is quite interesting. There is something wrong with this mold because when I try to on and off, just turn it off this, this freaking product, it's like almost impossible. And now when I did it turn it down, it's going to be like freaking fantastic. So it's just the fact that they're messing it up. Okay, so this thing is made in 2020. So this device, all of it is made in 2020 so far we can see. So let's put this thing back in. Like, what did they mess up so, so bad? Like, the way how they made it, like this freaking LED is like bingling around. Oh boy. <sighs> the way how they made this is freaking awful. But there was one thing that is quite interesting. So let's check the middle, let's say the cartridge slot. I wanted to zoom in and show you this, like this thing comes with 2018, so not every single part is in 2020 made. So some parts are 2020, uh, some parts are 2018. Hmm. And over here we're going to get the third piece to be, and this piece to be has the, also a date of 2018. So this is already an old piece. They grabbed from the shelf, that's the option for HDMI, AV out, and of course the input for the 5 volt micro USB. But when you're grabbing a new generation or let's say in China knockoff, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of thing you're going to buy, they are like looking most of the time like this. The technology has been improving significantly in the last couple of decades. So this is what you're going to get. They don't need a lot of parts, gigantic circuit boards inside. It's like the new generation of stuff. But what I didn't like was the audio signal output of the OVR AV out. Okay, so another thing I don't like at all. So when you want to put the front port back or the PCB that contains the front port and the LED, you need to put a lot of like a pressure on it to get it in the right position. And that also makes the problem with the on and off switch. So oh boy, oh boy. Assembly, this thing will be a freaking nightmare, but the way how they did the quality control, that in my opinion. All right guys, so this is what you're going to get with the HDMI family, com family computer compact edition from our friends from China. So the Famicom edition, I must say that the controller itself 
plays okay it feels kind of chip here and there like especially with the d-pad you need to press it really hard to get any response so that's a little bit of bummer in my opinion the wireless functionality is really cool and the battery inside you can replace it if you want to give you a couple of hours of play time in the end the quality of the device yeah the signal output on av out is pretty damn awful yeah when it comes to the signal you can always hear like the zooming sound a little bit of a bummer it is awesome that you have like wireless connectivity with the controller but also with an hdmi function and overall it's yeah i think it's one of the best clones nowadays that i have seen do love this model is it better than original nothing beats the original quality if you ask me but it's a fun device it's a naughty device i want to thank you for watching consider subscribing hit a little bell become one of the wicked family and i'll see you in the next video